ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's halftime presentation presented by the Lincoln Community High School Marching Railers. The Railers are under the direction of Mr. David Schwarz and the field leadership of drum major Kendall Coffey. Tonight the Railers will perform four songs from their 2014 show, that 60s show. Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones, Respect by Aretha Franklin, Light My Fire by The Doors, Whiter Shade of Pale by Procol Harum. Coffee, is your band ready for tonight's halftime show? Ladies and gentlemen, the Marching Railers and That 60s Show.
competitions. Earlier this year they competed at the Washington Field and took third place in Class 3A. Last week they competed in the Monticello Field. Paula Kodat back at the station engineering tonight and Benjamin Yacht up filming on the deck. Bob Derber along with Coach Ken Schweitzer. The rail splitters just done with their warm-ups. SHG is done with theirs across the way and we get ready here for the second half. Lincoln I think will uh, be kicking off to start this half. They received the first uh, the beginning of the game so they're going to kick off here to start the second half and uh, as you said as soon as that ball is touched the clock will start and not stop. No and that's the first time we saw it started that early I guess with the big lead as you said the coaches and the and the officials got together and decided to start to run with the 53-0 lead. Yeah it's not normal they wouldn't normally do that but you know it was a good decision I mean the game uh, game is well in hand for them and uh, 
you know, it's just not going to get any better. So it could be, you know, they're going to have some second and third stringers in there. Their starters won't be playing now. And so hopefully Lincoln can compete just a little better with them. And tell me if I'm wrong, Coach, if once you start that running clock, even if a team comes back under the 40, I think that still continues. Correct, correct. They uh, keep it running because nobody's going to come back from a 40-point deficit to, to win a game. So. Uh, so the rail splitters. You, you got down by 40 for some reason. You're not going to totally change that in, in the half. No. Kicking away, away for the rail splitters looks like it's number 77 for Lincoln. I don't know if I've seen him kick before or not. That's Jacob Huskins. Hmm. I think he's a sophomore. And he just kind of short pooches it up across the 30. And the Cyclones pick it up at the 26, up to the 30, to the 35, and finally spun down across the 40-yard line. And that was uh, big number 80 for the Cyclones. And that's a sophomore, Nolan Reeve, 6'3", 175. Well, it's uh, hope the Railers will be aggressive here on defense. You know, when we saw them Springfield game a couple weeks ago, they were very aggressive on defense, and it made a big difference. And I think last week in the first half, uh, they kind of followed that up and then just ran out of gas in that second half against Eisenhower. So it'll be Brent Heisen at quarterback and a new running back in there uh, by the name of Tremaine Lee back there with Brent Eisen, and he's going to hand it off to Lee. Lee, a speedster, runs to the sideline. No running room there, so he tries to take it straight away, and he's not going anyway. He's dropped for a loss. He was the young speedster they put in there. He's only a freshman, 5'8", 160, but well covered by the rail splitters. One of the guys in on the tackle there was Ian Neitzel for Lincoln. Yeah, he did a nice job of stringing it out to the right side or to the left side, uh, the all defensive right side, and uh, wrapped him up before he could get going. So Tim Bernison, the quarterback uh, for the Cyclones, wears the number 15. He's 6'2 and 180 and a sophomore. So when Gabe Green graduates, he may be the main man for the Cyclones running out of that shotgun. As we said, Tremaine Lee in the backfield. He wears the number two. He's a freshman. And now here's the snap. And uh, Bernison, a lot of pressure. Good pressure and defense by the Railers. And Bernison's just got to throw it away, and it's picked off by the Railers along the sideline. They go. Lincoln with the football. Look for the – and they finally tackled down inside the five-yard line. Interception by the rail splitters. Might have been Cannon. I'm not sure. Could have been. He got a nice block down there that sprung him close to the, you know, he, he had a guy over there trying to make a tackle, and somebody made a great block there that sprung him down to inside the five, down to the four. First and goal for the rail splitters. Isles uh, now runs out uh, into the huddle, and the Railers with a chance to score. First and goal at the four-yard line for the rail splitters. Very exciting play there on the interception. Hood Knight, they're saying now, was the guy that made the interception. Isles comes up under center. He may take it himself. He's going to hand it off. Around the outside, that's Metalco, and he may have got a yard out of it. Yeah, I think he's on the three. Pick up a one. That was still tough sledding uh, inside there. Uh, you just got to go power football and try to get it to the end zone. No, I think that was Pud Knight. That was Pud Knight that made the turn for the yard. Good night. Three yard line, second and goal for the rail splitters. Quickly moving clock, the Cyclones lead at 53-0, but the Lincoln Railers want to get on the scoreboard. Coming out of a power eye. Here's the handoff, that is Metalco, touchdown. Brent Metalco for the touchdown for the rail splitters after that uh, interception by Bud Knight. And six points for the Railers. Chalk it up with 8.45 remaining in the third quarter. Uh, that was a set up by the turnover, of the interception, Bob. And the interception was set up by a lot of pressure on the quarterback, forcing him out of the pocket, making him roll to his right, and he just threw it down. Uh, had a receiver there, but he got picked off and returned by the Railers. Now the Railers are going to go for two points. They're going to come out on that power eye again. Isles up under center. Here's the snap. He wants to throw. A lot of pressure on him in the end zone. 
Boone. No, he couldn't hang on to it. I thought it was a good pass. He led him with it, but he couldn't hang on. So the score is going to be SHG 53, Lincoln 6. We'll be Dean Leaf Plumbing, Heating, and Soft Water Incorporated in Lincoln, serving Lincoln, Logan County, and Central Illinois for over 60 years. For all of your commercial and residential steam heat and hot water boiler inspection and service needs, plus new kitchen and bath installations, phone 732-8598 with 24-hour emergency service available. That's Dean Leaf, Plumbing and Heating. So the rail splitters put six on the board, and 8.45 remains in the third quarter, and kicking it away for the rail splitters. Again, it'll be uh, number 77 for the rail splitters. That's Jacob Huskins. He's a sophomore, six foot, 220 pounder. Huskins kicks it away, and he kicks that short pooch again down to the 27-yard line where they pick it up to the 30. They look for running room. It's the same guy, and they knock him out of bounds. That was uh, number 80 for the Cyclones, Nolan Reavy, the same guy that picked it up before. And Braden Tanner, the junior, is the guy that knocked him out of bounds. Gave him a good shot. Yeah, they kick that short. I think they're kicking it short on purpose, and maybe they don't kick it very deep anyway, but... Uh, it's had a good effect, giving the kick team a chance to get down there and cover it. Yeah, I, don't, I think Tremaine Lee's back deep, and the freshman, they don't want him to get it. Now Lee's going to check out. He's not going to run this series. New guys in there for the Cyclones. Benny Williamson here to the near side. Brent Eisen out of the shotgun. The rail splitters will attempt to stop him again. They had good pressure last time. A new running back in there, and he's taken down from behind, but he's close to a first down. That was uh, number 38, D.J. Mackey, and the tackle made by the senior, Ian Neitzel. And you say his twin brother's out with a sprained ankle, Coach. That's what I heard this morning, yeah, that he's uh, turned an ankle, not able to play tonight, unfortunately. And, uh, um, you know, when you miss any of your players, that hurts. And uh, so that, that's made a difference there, too. But as that, on that play, Ian Neitzel kind of got beat at the line of scrimmage, but he came back and, and grabbed him from behind, got him down for a 90-yard pickup. Ball's just a football length short of a first down. The 48-yard line. Brent Eisen out of the shotgun. Hands off again. There's the first down, and a running back still keeps on the run. I believe that's the same guy. That is uh, that's 38, 39. Luke Notes. Lincoln's got an injury on the side, on the, down there on the field. Hell, he's talking to the coach. It's like number 39. Who, that's Maybe, a, I think, that's yeah. Colton Grant. I don't know. He, uh, hopefully, just he's all right. Yeah, I don't know. He might have just had the air knocked out. I'm not sure. Yeah. Colton Grant's uh, one of the inside linebackers for Lincoln. Where's number 39? He's a junior, 6'3", 200-pounder. The trainer's out there talking to him. Joe Ryan's out there and Coach McDonald. And they're just going to make sure he's all right. Colton Grant. And now he's getting up. Number 39 for the rail splitters. And he walks off the field. Looks like a stinger maybe on his right wrist. So the ball spotted at the uh, Lincoln 38-yard uh, line where it's first and 10. And they'll start the clock at the, now they do it, the 7.02 marker of the third quarter. Cyclones lead the Railers 53-6. Two receivers split wide to the right, two to the near side. Brent Eisen, the quarterback, uh, waits for the snap out of the shotgun. Now he's, and now they blow it dead. A blown dead. 33 is the running back still. Or that's a new one. That's uh, Kyle Espijo, 5'8", 170, a senior. Illegal procedure against the Cyclones. And the ball's back to the uh, Lincoln. 43-yard line. Been a pretty clean game so far, Bob. SHG had those three penalties in the first half and one here, and the Railers have not been penalized all night. Good discipline for the Railers. So it'll be first and 15 for the Cyclones. Tim Bernison, the sophomore out of the shotgun on the Golden Helmets. He hands off. Knots uh, knocked down at the 44-yard uh, line. Now checking in for the rail splitters is Ryan Ruchke. Ruchke's a junior, 5'8", 175 pounder. That's good pursuit by the defense there on the left side, Bob. Uh, they stacked that up at the line of scrimmage and actually uh, dropping for a one yard loss there. Could see the who was in on the tackle, but two or three green shirts there making this play. Second and 16 for the Cyclones. 
5.34 left third quarter. Bernison out of the shotgun. He's got the lone running back with, with him there. There's the snap, and that's Tremaine. No, he's going to keep it. Bernison kept it, and the Railers having trouble keeping him down, and they finally run him out of bounds just inside the, uh, oh, I say short of the 35-yard line. I don't know if he planned to keep that or not, Bob. They, they were pulling people to the left side, and he went to the right side, and uh, maybe they're giving the defense a false read there on that play, but uh, he picked up some nice yardage down to about the 37-yard line. So it'll be third down for the Cyclones. Follow 456 the remaining third quarter. Cyclones lead it 53-6. And I believe the Cyclones play Glenwood next week. That's right. Bernison out of the shotgun. Third down play for the Cyclones. Tremaine, Tremaine Lee, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 35. Got about two yards out of it, Coach, so it'll be fourth down. Good job by the defense yeah, for good, the rail splitters. Good pursuit by the Railers, uh, you know, from side to side. Uh, this, this group that uh, SHG has on the field just doesn't have quite the size and speed as their, as their starting players, and Lincoln is able to pursue that and stop him for a short gain, a couple yards. I don't know if they've got anybody that can kick a field goal from there. That'd be a long field goal. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, there's... A lot of college teams couldn't kick one from there. So Bernison and Tremaine Lee in the backfield. Bernison the quarterback, the freshman running back Tremaine Lee. Running guys in and out here for the Cyclones. They've still got 11 guys out there now. Bernison's got the football, gives off Tremaine Lee, right side, he's got the first down and more. Still on his feet, finally tripped up close to the 15 yard line. 20 yard run there for Tremaine Lee. Yeah, another running first down. Uh, he's got some speed and some uh, moves too, Bob. He uh, evaded a couple tacklers and then uh, squirted away from a couple others to pick up the big yardage and the first down, down inside the 20. So they're calling it the 18 yard line, first and 10. 318 left for the third quarter. I want to thank all our fine sponsors. Uh, they're bringing you Lincoln Railer football, Grau Incorporated, the Fifth Street Food Mart Community Action Partnership, the Carpet House that's been with us forever. Timmy Brenheisen, the quarterback for the Cyclones, first and 10 at the Lincoln 18 yard line. Tremaine Lee is going to get the call again. Lee goes for the sideline, stays on his feet, still on his feet, and he's finally tackled from behind by a couple of rail splitters. Yeah, he's, he's, his speed, you know, he's proven to the to the Railer defense. You can't just arm tackle players. You know, you got to get into their body. Or they're going to keep right on running. That's what happened that time. He's only a freshman. Now Eric Sutton going to check in defensively for the Rail Splitters. Giving one of the big guys a break. Coming out for the Rail Splitters, uh, that's uh, Jacob Huskins. He's been doing the kicking, and uh, Sutton checks in to give him a break. Second and a nickel for the Cyclones at the Lincoln 12-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right for the Cyclones. I believe they've switched their running back, and they have knots on the right side. Looks, I got hit right before the first down marker. He got inside the 10 as he went out of bounds, got run out of bounds over there, Bob. But he just, just about a yard short, maybe that first down marker. He's inside the, just inside the 10. Third and a deuce now for the Cyclones at the 10 yard line. Clock on the move, 139 left for the third quarter. Cyclones lead at 53-6. Next week, uh, the rail splitters travel to Rochester. And Glenwood will be at SHG. Renison's got the snap. He keeps it himself, looks for the pylon on the outside, and he's in for the touchdown. 59-6 to with a minute 20 left in the third quarter as the Cyclones take it in. Bernison, Timmy Bernison, the sophomore. That's his second running touchdown, Bob. He had one right there uh, within the last minute of the first half. And now the Cyclones will line it up, go for the extra point. This is going to be um, Austin Summer. Summer's 5'10", 200, and a junior. Where's the number five? He's got that wicked soccer kick. He's missed a couple. He's going to try it again. Here's the attempt, and this time he really gets his foot into it. 
And I think we got a penalty on the on the field, so he may have to re-kick that one. Rail splitters may have been off sides. They got in there pretty quick and knocked the kicker down. Uh, yeah, here we go. No, it's procedure against the uh, cyclone, so they're gonna have to kick that one over, Bob. That'll take him back. Summer. Brent Heisen will be on the hold. Here's the snap. He gets into it again. It looks good. And it is. And that'll make the score. SHG 60. And the rail splitter 6 with a minute 20 left in the third. Don't forget to join the Scott Kirby and Jake Johnson Cheap Seats live Saturday morning sports show featuring Joe Ryan at the new all-new Mission Mart located 119 North Sangamon Street along the railroad tracks in historic downtown Lincoln tomorrow from 9 to 10 with a special guest LCH head railer football coach Andy McDonald. If you can't make the show, tune in to 96.3 FM or streaming live 24-7 on WLCNonline.com. The Cheap Seats. Saturday morning sports show, Logan County's longest airing live sports. And, of course, after the game, don't forget to listen to Jeff, number two in the classic rock and roll. Classic rock by night and country by day, the best of both worlds. Now the Cyclone's going to kick it away. Got a new kicker in there, and that is Colin Boyd. Boyd will kick it away from his own 40-yard line. And he gets his foot into it, a left foot. Soccer, and oh, and the Railer drops it at the 10. He's got to run back for it, picks it up, and now he's back to the five-yard line. Scampers around, tries to get to the sideline, and he's run out of bounds at about the six-yard line. That was Pud Knight. <sighs> when, you, when you don't catch a clean, you're in deep trouble. And he tried to get out to the sideline, but uh, they covered it well. They stay in their lanes and cover the ball well and uh, drove him out. Inside the 10, I'm not sure where they're going to spot it. No Coach White, so now we're in the red, down to 47 seconds left, third quarter. I think he's on the five-yard line. First and 10 for the rail splitters. And maybe it's outside the five on the six. Isles hanging in there at quarterback. And Isles uh, looks at the play clock. He ducks up underneath center. Man in motion. Hand off. Second guy through. Gets back to about the line of scrimmage at the six. Keeps his feet moving and maybe picked up another yard, coach. I got a little shove in the back. I don't know, but the pile kept moving. You're right, Bob. He picked up almost five on the play. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter with the score. Sacred Heart Griffin Cyclone 60 and the rail splitter six. We'll be back in a minute. They've switched ends of the fields. Again, we want to thank our good friend, uh, Steve Sauer, a happy birthday. And then his beautiful uh, bride, Donna Nora, celebrates her birthday on Sunday. Today it's Steve, tomorrow it's Donna, and a big happy birthday to both of them. It'll be a big party out on the west side of town. Yeah, that's a crazy end of town out yeah. there. I'm almost afraid to go out there sometimes. Well, especially when they're partying, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, they just, the police just seal that area off. Steve and Donna, they party hardy. You have to have permission to go into that neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah. Second and seven for the rail splitters. Isles hands it off. They're running back for the Railers, looking for running room at the 10, and he's hit right there at the 10-yard line. Three-yard pickup for the rail splitters. That was uh, 11 for the rail splitters. That's uh, Nathan Pudnight. Maybe got one on the play. It looked like if he had turned up Bob sooner, he might have got a few more yards, but he tried to go sideways, and the defense just closed on him and, and stopped him for a yard pickup. Making a third and six situation for the rail splitters. 60 to six, the Cyclones lead it. You're listening to 96.3 FM out of Atlanta and Lincoln, Illinois. Here's uh, in motion, Lenaris. Gets this pitch, and there's just no running room for him. He spun down back close to the goal line. That was Pudnight again, uh, Nathan Pudnight again. And uh, when he saw all the white shirts, he decided to stop and change direction, and that was a, that's not a good idea either, and he just got swarmed under on the four. That's, uh, that's Yacht in there at quarterback now for the rail splitters, number 11. No, no, that's... Am I making a mistake there? Well, it's 
take little glasses to see. It's hard oh, Jan's number 12. Here's the snap, kicked away. That was him kicking. That was Yacht kicking. And they pick it up, the Cyclones. Looking for running room along the sideline. They've got it. And I don't see the signal. It didn't quite make it in. I guess, yes, he did. Touchdown, Cyclones. Route 66 to six. The Cyclones lead it by 60. I didn't see who that was, but uh, I, was, I was watching to see who that was kicking for us, Bob. We can't see that number, but that was uh, that Andrew Yant. And, uh, yeah, I didn't pick up that name. Wasn't much, uh, much of a distraction to stop him from getting to the end zone. Colin Boyd going to attempt the extra point. Surprised they don't keep the clock running. Yeah, that they, uh, on the running clock, they stop them for scores, injuries, and timeouts. So this is a score again. So Colin Boyd kicks with the left foot for the Cyclones. Here's the snap. Boyd, and he kicks it through the uprights. 67-6, and we'll be back. Don't forget to stop by Sharon's Auto Repair located at 929 South Kickaboo Street in Lincoln. More than just auto repair, family owned and operated, phone 735-2222. I don't think we've got them all, Coach, of our sponsors. I was double checking to make sure we got them. Yeah, we got, we got, we're glad to have so many. We've got to make sure we go through all of our sheets and get them. Yeah, I don't You've want to miss any job. of them. You've done a good job. you got them all. I think I did. Well, here's one I missed, I think. I missed Timber Crest Veterinary Service, PC in Atlanta and Lincoln. Pleased to announce the addition of Dr. Greg Anderson and Dr. Sarah Flutie and CVT Erica Hackerson. And here we go, the kickoff by the Cyclones. It's a long sidewinder, and Metalco's going to get it at the 10. He's up to the 15. He drops it, picks it back up. Still looks for running room. Now here he comes again, and he's finally wrapped up at about the 20-yard uh, line. I don't know if that was planned or not. I'm sure it wasn't, Bob, but it looked like he had one more guy to beat here. That was that was Pud Knight. Was it to come to the two. left side? Yeah, Zach and uh, one guy grabbed him before he could get by. So he's got it out to the 20 for the Railers, and he worked hard to get it there. And, and now Yant's in at quarterback. He may have been before. That's Andrew Yant. He's number 12. He's a sophomore. Yeah, he's the one who punted the last time for the Railers, Bob, and uh, Railers just didn't get down and cover very well. Pud Knight uh, with that run there, he's a junior, 5'9", 130 pounder, where's the number two? And now Andrew Yon will run, uh, come up under center on the first and ten for the rail splitters. He's got a man in motion, and he rolls out to his right. He's got a little bit of time, and he throws it up ahead, and it's incomplete. He threw it right into the pocket there, but the receiver just couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, so they, they had a defender right there with the receiver, and uh, he might even got a hand in there and knocked it loose. I'm not sure, but uh, tough tough uh, ball to get in there, and uh, the Railer receiver just hadn't gotten any separation from the defender. So it'll be second and 10 for the rail splitters. 8.50 left for the football game. Next week we travel to Rochester. Doesn't get any better. They're the four-time defending champions, and they beat SHG last year. They're 4-0 going against Southeast tonight, so... More than likely be 5-0 and uh, for our game next week. Game six of the season. An exciting Central State 8-plus-2 as Decar uh, Decatur MacArthur and Decatur Eisenhower have joined the league. One, one receiver to each side for the rail splitters. Now they got a man in motion. And uh, I think that may be Linares. Linares. Alex Linares. He's a sophomore. He got the handoff from Yant. Linares, uh, 21, uh, his number, he's 5'11", 150. He just barely got back to the line of scrimmage trying to go to the right side, and a uh, little block in there kind of broke down. The defense came up from the secondary and made a stop there right at the line of scrimmage. Ball's uh, about where, the 19-yard line? Yeah, well, just about touching the 20, but uh, yeah. third, and, third and 10 here. I'd like to see the Railers get a first down and hang on to the ball. Andrew Yant comes up under center. 
Looks along the line of scrimmage. Left, right. Now he's got the snap. He's back to throw. Where's the number 12? And he's got his man along the sideline. Complete pass there. Nice pass there. Had time. Got some blocking there. Yant did. And he's number 11, I think, on the reception. I believe that's Pudnight. That is uh, Nathan Pudnight. I think that's who it was. Made the catch from Andrew Yant. Fourth down for the rail splitters at the 26. Might as well go for it. 6.56 left in the football game. Railers trail it 67-6. Near side. Yant goes up under center. Now he's got a man in motion. Rolls out to his left. He may keep it. Runs for the sideline and out of bounds. He's knocked out of bounds. Didn't make the first down, but uh, it's going to be first and 10 SHG. But Yant tried to, to make the turn as he came to the sideline, and he got knocked out of bounds. Yeah, I think he, I think he realized that uh, he wasn't going to be able to outrun him. He got out to the 29. He got close, picked up three. Well, it just came up a yard short. And he's going to stay in there on defense as one of the defensive backs, Andrew Yant. So with 28 yard line, it'll be first and 10 for the Cyclones. 6.05 left for the football game and the Cyclones lead at 67.6. You're listening to 96.3 FM and you're also listening on WSN, WLCNonline.com. Memorial Sports Care, uh, Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, phone 217-605-5008. Stop by the beautiful all-new facility located at 200 Stallhut Drive in Lincoln. And it looks like now Brent Eisen and the... They're going to just the, take a knee here. Just keep kneeing out. So we can run through some more of our sponsors. Yeah, I'll just let them do it. We don't want to watch. Didn't finish up on the Timbercrest Veterinary Service PC in Atlanta and Lincoln. Please announce the addition of Dr. Greg Anderson and Dr. Sarah Flutie and CVT Erica Hackerson to their professional staff. With expanded hours at both locations, they look forward to meeting you and your animals while providing the latest in modern progressive treatments. Phone 217-732-5700 today. And Coach Leonard has told his troops to just kneel it out. We're just going to let the clock run down and get us out of here on this Friday night. Damn it, yeah. From the, Hanlon Field. The, the play clock's not running, so they don't even have to step, take a knee. They're just going to just let the clock run. Let's mention all the rest of all our fine sponsors Castle Manor Supported Living, Fricky Calvert uh, Schrader Funeral Home, Rick Cam State Farm Insurance, Lincoln IGA on Pulaski Street, Town and Country Bank, Eaton Corporation, been with us since 1957. Lincoln College, they've been with us since Abraham Lincoln back in 1865. Blades Hair and Nail Salon, Timbercrest Veterinarian Service, that's that new service we told you about. Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Future Stars, Lincoln and Impact Studio, Dean Leith Plumbing, Heating and Soft Water, they've been with us forever. Lincoln Printers, and uh, also uh, want to thank the Billboard sponsors, Bright Idea Screen Printing, Kathy Denny Realtor at Worth & Associates, Mama's Arcade Cafe, Stufferia Pizza, Headline Salon, LLC, AG Farms, Best Western Plus Lincoln Inn, Sharon's Auto Repair, and Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital. And our halftime sponsor is Grau Incorporated. And the clock continues to run next week. As we told you, the rail splitters travel to Rochester and... Uh, Glenwood will be at SHG, and uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to do a game at SG, SHG last year, Ken, in a pretty exciting place. Oh, yeah, it's a great, great facility. Great to watch a game from. I'm sure it's great to play and coach on, uh, but, yeah, they, they've done it right down there, and uh, just a great feel and great uh, everything around it, the bleachers, uh, the press box was terrific. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun place to, you know, when you're, when you're good at football and you've got a facility like that, it's, it's a lot of fun for them, I'm sure. So the Cyclones kneel out that series of down, and now the rail splitters will take over first and ten. Coaches, I remember last year the Cyclones scored 69, and I can't remember whether we scored or not. No, it was 69-0 was the final score last year, I believe. So Andrew Yant, number 12, the young sophomore, are going to take the field, run one more series of down for the rail splitters. There's uh, 2.37 left 
here in the football game on a beautiful Friday night underneath the lights here at Hanlon Field. Lincoln Community High School, uh, this facility, first graduating class was in 1959. Yon's going to keep it, and he gets maybe a couple yards out of it. Out to the 38-yard uh, lines. I think he got three yards. Yon from the 35 to the 38. Yeah, he didn't have quite the success as Isles did running that play, but, uh, you know, he still got three yards out of it, and uh, it's a good first down play. Down to the two-minute warning here. And there, of course, there isn't a two-minute warning, warning in high school football. Yance on the sideline talking to the coaches, getting the play. And one of those coaches uh, for the rail splitters over there is uh, Jake Harnicky. And remember back when he played, he was a great quarterback for the rail splitters. Jake Harnicky, I'm glad he's come back to help with the program. Andrew Yant with the football in motion was Lenaris, but the handoff to the second guy through, and he stays on his feet, and he gets down across the 40-yard line. Maybe we can pick up who that was. 42, I think, is the number. That's Ryan Ruchke, if it's number 42. Yep, that's him. Ruchke uh, is a, a junior. And he is a 5'8", 175-pounder. Ball across the 40-yard line where it will be third down for the rail splitters. Third and just a little bit less than five yards. And Jan on the sidelines talking to Jacob Harnicky. And he'll head back out there onto the field. In the red, yes, as the old clocks... Uh, uh, you know, it used to be in the red, and that's the way it is when you get under a minute. 46 seconds. Yant, he's got a man in motion. That's Lenaris. Lenaris with the football, looks for the first down, dives. He's got it. First and 10 for the rail splitters. With 35 seconds left in the football game, that's one of the highlights for Lincoln tonight, as Lenaris got the first down. Alex Lenaris. That was his uh, second carry, Bob. Picked up uh, seven on that one. Uh, that more than likely could be the last play here unless Railers try to quickly get another one off. Yance over talking nope, to Harnicky, and now they're just going to bring the rail splitters off the field. That's going to be it. The final score here tonight is going to be the defending champion Sacred Heart Griffin Cyclones ranked number one in the state, 67, and the Lincoln Rail Splitters, six, and both teams will line up and shake hands. We'll take a timeout, go back to the station, and we'll, then we'll be back to wrap it up. Lincoln Railer football on 96.3 FM and WLCNOnline.com is brought to you by Brow Incorporated, Fist Reef Food Mart, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, The Carpet House, Castle Manor Support of Living, Ricky Coward Trader Funeral Home, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln IGA, Town and Country Bank, Eaton Corporation, Lincoln College, Flay Terranel Salon, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Future Stars Lincoln and Impact Studio, Dean Leaf Plumbing, Heating and Soft Water, Lincoln Printers, Jane's Hair Salon, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, Kathy Denny Realtor at Worth & Associates, Mama's Arcade Cafe, Stufferia Pizza, Headline Salon LLC, AG Farms, Best Western Plus, Lincoln Inn, and by Sharon's Auto Repair. 